And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. And so you know, they don't even tell me who the teacher of the year is. I don't think they trust me. I do get so excited. Our 2020 Teacher of the Year is Joseph M. Welsh. Congratulations, Joseph. So as my colleagues back at North Hills, and I know a few of them are watching with my students, will know, I'm the guy that they usually can't get the micro microphone away from, so <laughs> I apologize in advance. Now this is an experience that leaves me speechless, and that is the opposite of my personality. First off, congratulations to my fellow finalists, and I think each of these individuals, great people, and even better teachers deserve one more round of applause. I'd be remiss if I also didn't thank Secretary Rivera for all of his kind words and to PDE in general for this fantastic experience. To the folks from Enstoy PA, specifically Angela, for her countless emails back and forth from each of us. Thank you for all of your work. And to Michelle Swatala for chairing the application process. And again, I believe they all deserve a round of applause as well. I've been privileged to follow from afar on social media several of our past recipients that have led with such a shining example of what it means to be an outstanding teacher. So Marilyn, Jen, Michael, and Mari, and so many past recipients of the Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year, thank you for the example that you have set and I'm sure will continue to set. So thank you to them and let's give them a round of applause as well. <laughs> to my family, Sarah, when I come home with a crazy lesson plan idea, you just say, go for it. And you've always encouraged me to go for it and to do more. And I thank you for being my best friend and for always being my, my sidekick on my lesson planning. To Julia and Noah, my children, you inspire me every day, and you make me want to be a better person every day. To my students back at North Hills and Aubriana Bench, who is here, who presented me earlier today, thank you for making every day fun, enjoyable, and overwhelming. I don't think a day goes by where I don't laugh, I smile, and sometimes even cry. To my administrators back at North Hills and many administrators that have come before, Mr. Lieberman, thank you for all of the support that you have shown me. But I've been fortunate enough to work in a school district that has always allowed me to follow my passions, to pursue my students' passions, and that means the world. And to my two best friends back at North Hills, I think watching the live stream, Larry Dorenkamp, who nominated me for this award, and Mrs. Vicki Trushin, who is teaching English right now back at North Hills. Hi, Mrs. Trushin. Hi, Mrs. Trushin's class. Your friendship means the world to me. But like any history teacher, I need to share a story. 
Don't worry, I'm not just going to push play. <laughs> but this summer, I was at the beach with my daughter. And like any small child, what do they like to do at the beach? Splash in the water, build a sandcastle. But Julia, you wanted to go and you wanted to get seashells, right? And we got our two buckets and we went out to get some seashells. And here I am, carrying the buckets along, and Julia goes, oh, look at this one. Look at that one. I want this one. I say, Julia, that one's broken. She said, it's still beautiful, Daddy. I said, okay, put it in the bucket. Go down a few, few more steps. She picks up another. Julia, that one has a hole in it. I can still use it. It could be an ornament. Julia, you want me to carry all of these? Here I am, carrying two buckets full down the beach. We can make something beautiful out of it, Daddy. Those are her direct words. And that struck me for two reasons. Number one, Julia teaches me to embrace differences, differences in our students, the diversity that our students teach, bring, and the story, not as a seashell, but as a person each of our students bring. And I'm going to go back to my roots in Pittsburgh here. Mr. Rogers, she reminds me, and I hope I bring this to my students every day, there's no person in the whole world like you. And I like you just the way you are. And Julia, you remind me, or you reminded me of that that day on the beach. But then the second thing that's important that I think each of us need to bring back to our, our students is that Julia didn't look at those seashells as a problem. She saw a solution. She saw that she was going to take what she has and create something from it, to make something larger. I, as an adult, I initially saw, and I saw something that was broken. She looked. She saw belonging, and she saw an opportunity to create something more. And I believe it's our job to put students in those positions to, one, to belong, and two, to create. So how can we bring our talent, talents and combine those with the talents of our students, their stories, their own backgrounds, and to solve the issues that are important to them? By connecting with our community and building empathy, understanding relationships between and within communities, that's how we get there. And the great thing is, all across Pennsylvania, we're, we're already doing this. Back at North Hills, where we have a community oral history project, to Avonworth Elementary, where hashtag be the kind kid has swept across Pennsylvania and the world, to South Fayette High School, where their students are looking to combat the opioid epidemic because those are all issues that are important to those students and all of us together. So again, where adults sometimes see potential problems, our children, our students see opportunities to solve and connect with each other. Don't get me wrong, content is important, but social and emotional intelligence and valuing each other is paramount. There's a reason my mother, all throughout high school, she never told me, go get an A on a test, not once. She said, do your best. But she always told me every morning these two things. And I sometimes shrugged them off and I went about my day. But it helps to define the students that, or the values that I want to instill in my own students. And it was, thank the bus driver, thank the lunch lady. People are people. Those relationships can do so much for our students and in the future. And if I may, just one more history teacher angle to this. And it's an obscure line from the musical Hamilton. And if you know it, feel free to sing along. <coughs> I'm not going to sing. And it goes, when you've got skin in the game, you stay in the game. But you don't get a win 
unless you play in the game. That's a line that doesn't get, you know, it's not young, scrappy, and hungry. It's not, there's a million things I haven't done. It's none of those. I'm sorry if any Hamilton fans are out there. But when we get opportunities in any content area where we allow students to bring what they value in and they can solve a problem, I think we all get a win because they will be involved people in their workforce, in the future, and throughout the rest of their lives. So my challenge to you is how can we bring diverse perspectives, stories and challenges, and build relationships with all of our students, our communities, to benefit not only their future time as a worker, as an employee, but as a person. Thank you to my fellow finalists. It's been overwhelming the past day, getting to meet each, each and every one of you. Thank you to everybody at PDE, and thank you for such a wonderful honor. Thank you.